Let's add in a second thematic layer. If we go to thematic layer 2 and click on edit layer, we can now add in a second layer. Remember we discussed this concept of having different layers in a map being represented by different pieces of data. As we're adding more health data to this map, it's a good idea to add some type of data that is related to the initial data we mapped on the first layer. Our first layer contains information for the malaria RDT positives. So we should try and add a second layer that relates to this first layer in some way. In this case, we can compare the malaria RDT positives with the number of tests that have been performed. We'll work with data elements again and select malaria. Let's select the malaria RDTs that have been done. We should select the same period as we did previously. We selected a relative period and we selected this year. As for the organization units, let's select the district level. This will allow us to have one layer of data that shows information by district and another layer of data that shows information by facility. For our options, we are just going to leave them default for now. As these two layers will be stacked upon one another, we should make sure that the colors complement each other. In this case, it will work out well if we just leave the color scale to be the same as the color scale we used previously. Let's update the map. We can see what effect this has on the map. We'll just decrease this facility layer legend. So now we can see the second thematic layer. Here we see the information associated with that second layer we've added to the map. We might want to change our method. In the first layer, we've used equal counts. Let's also use equal counts for the second thematic layer. In this map, we can look at the correlation between the RDT positive tests at the facility level and the total number of RDT tests done within that particular district. As a simplification, lighter facilities should match up with lighter districts. However, this might not always be the case in practice. We can save these maps as favorites, just like we did with charts and tables. The favorites interface is a little bit different when compared to the pivot table and data visualizer applications. If we click on favorite, a prompt will come up that allows us to manage our favorites. Here we can search for favorites and also add new favorites. If I want to add a new favorite, I'll click on add new, and then I'll provide the favorite with a name. We'll still follow the same naming convention that we've been using this entire time. Once we've provided the favorite with a name, we click on create. In order to pull the favorite back up, we just go to favorites, we search for the favorite, and then we can pull our favorite back up. 